Hi, welcome for our online trainings and placements. In this session, we are going to discuss what are the things we are supposed to prepare for PLS skill in, in Arak Labs Technical when you are applying as Arak Labs Technical. For PLS skill point of view, what are the topics we are supposed to be clear? That's what we are going to discuss here. Okay, so we have seen in our previous session uh, about the SQL topics. Now we are talking about the PLS skill. PLS skill is very important because when we are writing any interfaces uh, or any some programs in our forms triggers, okay, all procedure functions packages triggers are very rare case in our clubs. Generally, we don't use because uh, we have alternative concept called alerts, right? So instead of triggers, we will use alerts in Oracle Apps Technical. We have periodic alerts and event alerts. Uh, in fact, Oracle will not recommend uh, to write the triggers on the standard tables. If client says that uh, I want to write a trigger on so-and-so table, Oracle will not recommend. I don't think so. They'll give the support also for the triggers. What Oracle says, instead of that, you go for define alert on that. Alert also will work almost the same and it is more flexible and has got more features compared to the PLS skill triggers. Okay, so PLS skill point of view, we must be very uh, clear with the PLS skill blocks, like uh, declaration block, executable block, exception block. We should be very strong with that. And after that, we have to be clear with the variables, collections, how we have to work with the variables and collections. Collections is very, very, very important. When we are working with a uh, huge data validation point of view, we'll always use the collections. Like we have the bulk collect, bulk select, and we have PLS scale tables, and we have nested VRS nested tables. This we have that we are supposed to be very clear. Then we are supposed to work with the cursors. We have implicit cursor, explicit cursor, parameterized cursor, ref cursors. All these four we must be clear, practically and theoretically, because all four we will be using when we are working in the React. It's mandatory. When we will write an implicit cursor, for example, when I'm writing some interface program, I've written some update statement. Obviously, it's implicit cursor. I've written some select statement, simple select statement, select some count of purchase order number, segment one into some variable from PO header, sorry. So internally, the cursor is going to be opened and fetch the data and it is going to be closed automatically. Explicit cursor, it's also regular. And the ref cursor, if you want to change the query dynamically. So all these four types of cursors, we must be very clear. And also within the cursor, can we issue the commit? If so, what will happen? If not, then what is alternative? What is for update clause? What is where current of? This is all we have to write. We have to discuss within the cursors. And what are the cursor attributes we have? What are implicit cursor attributes? What are explicit cursor attributes? When we use percentage found, when we use percentage not found. And how will you find how many records has been updated? Percentage row count. What is SQL percentage row count? Okay. So this is all we are supposed to work with the cursors, cursors uh, area. Okay. Then after that, we are talked about procedures. Before that, exception handling, exception handling, and exception propagation. This is very, very important. How you will handle exceptions? No data found, too many rows, custom exceptions, raise application error, create custom exceptions by using pragma exception in it. Uh, during the executable block, I got an exception. I wanted to raise it immediately. How you will go for raise? I want to write some custom messages into the log file. How will you write? Okay, so I wanted to have separate procedure to maintain the error messages. How will you call that procedure from your program? This is all we must be practiced and we have to be very clear for entry point of view. Exception propagation is very, very important. When we are writing some complex programs in PLSQL, we are going to use multiple PLSQL blocks, parent block and as well as uh, child blocks within that. If any exception is raised within the child block, and it's going to be uh, updated and it's going to be specified over here it is. Okay, so in that scenario, the questions will come like this. I, I have defined uh, two blocks here in PLSQL. For example, this is our begin. And here I have written some PLSQL statement. It's a statement one. 
and then I have written some another statement here, PLS scale statement two. Within this, I have written another begin block. Here I have written exception block and I have raised exception. I have handled exception here. This is our inner block. This is my outer block here. Here also I have written exception. Now I'm running this program and uh, here I got an error. Here I got. So here multiple PLS skill blocks are there, inner block and outer block. Here I got error. And I have not handled the exception here. I have not written to catch that particular exception. I have written some custom exceptions, but it's not handling that. It's not catching that exception. So what will happen? Will the cursor comes to here? Or will cursor will go out of that? Here, for example, you have handled here. Yes, you have written some exception. It's catch that error. What will happen? Will the cursor go back, or will cursor will come again here, and it will execute the third statement, or cursor will go to this exception block? These questions are very very important, and not only the questions. When we are working in the project, which is very important, we are supposed to handle all this exception handling because we'll be putting debug messages uh, everywhere when we are doing the inbound interface, outbound interfaces. It's it's not only an Oracle Apps technical, PLS skill developer, D2K developer, Oracle Apps technical, Fusion technical, everywhere we'll be writing, right? So that's what we call it as exception propagation. We must have a strong knowledge, a very good commanding on this particular area. Okay, so after the exceptions uh, handling, then we should be very strong with the procedures, functions, packages. Of course, even we are not using the triggers, but still the expectation is high. What is trigger? What are DML triggers? What are instead of triggers? What are mutating trigger? What is mutating trigger error? How will you resolve mutating trigger error? Inside of the trigger, can I issue the commit? If not, what is the alternative? These are all questions they will be expecting. What is uh, trigger predicates like colon old, colon new? This is, uh, what are the uh, trigger uh, uh, access authentications you will go for define. Next, progmas. Very, very important. Progma autonomous transaction, progma exception rate, progma package reusable. This is all we will be, uh, they will be expecting in the interview point of view. In fact, we'll be working for progma autonomous transaction. We must be very clear with the example also. Okay, so like this, we are going to talk about the all PLS skill uh, uh, topics practically, and we are going to discuss all these things in our placement batch. So this is highly expected from the PLS skill uh, syllabus for Oracle Apps Technical. So if you need more information about the Oracle Apps Technical PLS skill developer uh, placements point of view, please communicate uh, with this number. They will be providing more information about this. Here is the contact number, okay? I'll be uploading this video in YouTube channel directly. You can get it all these videos over here it is, okay? This is PLS skill syllabus, what I'm telling here. So if you are strong like this, like what I have explained in my previous video, SQL, then as well as this PLS skill, then Oracle Apps Technical in the first video, then you will be able to get 100% job in Oracle Apps Technical. All this stuff will come. Initially, it looks like a vast syllabus. But when you start prepare day by day, day by day, you are going to get offer letter and you'll, you are going to settle down in the IT industry. Okay. Oracle Apps technical job is like a central government job. Once you join an Oracle Apps technical in IT industry, it's a central government job. If somebody is looking for central government job, then join in Oracle Apps technical and get a job and start your career. And finally, you can go for retire at 40 lakhs package in our collapse technical okay thank you thank you guys thanks for your time which you have spent with me so subscribe for my channel to get latest updates and communicate with our admin team placement team regarding the placement point of view yes